So I was able to decode some telemetry from HuskySat1 today on my second attempt. I initially set my radio and ICOM 706 Mark IIG to the most discrete tuning step possible so that every time I turned the knob it would only adjust the frequency a very small amount. And I did this because I was worried that if I adjusted it manually, inconsistently, like turn it a little bit, turn it back, turn it a little, turn it a little, that that would mess up the received signal such that the decoding software would get off kilter because I thought that it needed to have a continuous um, tone, like if the frequencies change, then it can't decode it. I'm really not sure if that's true. But in any event, what I found was that setting it to the lowest tuning step, uh, the most discrete, the most fine tuning step, and then trying to spin um, fast and thinking I was going to be able to use that to maintain a consistent downward uh, frequency change in order to follow the Doppler shifted frequency actually didn't work. And I ended up having to switch it to the normal um, increment of tuning step. And then it was adjusting the frequency a lot faster. And I was able to decode packets after max elevation. So basically, it took me a while of trying that really tight tuning step and not having that work. And then when it went past max elevation, the satellite, I switched over to the um, normal tuning step. And I was able to hear the signal and able to kind of hear on my own that different aspects of the modulation, I could hear things that I knew were important for the decoder. Whereas before that, I was a little bit behind the signal. And another thing that helped was see, somebody told me um, in the comments of my last video that the signal should be higher pitched. The signal that I received in that video, you could tell was relatively low. I watched some other videos people made of them receiving the telemetry successfully and indeed their signal their sound was much higher. So I knew what I wanted to tune for. Some people have SDRs and they can see the, the signal and you can see like the edges of it on each side. And then you can adjust the frequency such that the center tuning point of that SDR radio is right in the middle of that. And to me, that's uh, makes it a lot easier. So I don't, I don't have SDR, so I have to listen. And so I was able to use information people provided to me and actually decode 49 frames. So I was quite happy with that. Here is a recording of that audio played back uh, in real time through the decoding software. And I also set Orbitron to simulate the pass exactly um, as it came because I used timestamps at the beginning of my recording. I look at my phone and it says the time and the date, even with the seconds. And I say that over the recording and that way I can start the recording and sync up Orbitron or whatever software I want to, to make sure I can sync things up for making videos like this. So here you go. Okay, Husky Sat 1, 2020-01, rather, 1332-06 right then, Carolina Ale House.
wow. That was some swift Doppler shift. Uh, I think I got some packets though because there were times after the max elevation where I felt like I was really able to hear a lot of the uh, modulation. So it took me a while. I had to change my tuning step. Initially I had it really, really, um, uh, just I had lots of steps, very discrete steps, many, many, many steps. Most of this is radio supports. And I thought I would be able to spin fast and it would follow it without going up and down, but unfortunately it wasn't quite fast enough. Um, so I switched it off from the most, um, from having the most steps possible to the next level up. And then I could kind of turn it slowly and it was, um, it was a lot easier. I think it was like on kilohertz, so it was like, uh, point one, two, three, four, five. So way more than a kilohertz, a hundred thousandths of a kilohertz or something. I don't know. Cool. Let's go decode.